could you just explain what the union means to you? The United Kingdom, the union of the United Kingdom, for me, it's, it's the greatest political partnership the world has ever seen. It would be such a, a, a shame to lose the, the power, the magic uh, of that union. We are much, much stronger and better together than broken up. But if it is magic, why are we seeing things like this? I don't think Boris really cares about Northern Ireland particularly. And I think that Dominic Cummins cares even less. When the UK government talks about a Four Nations approach, they tend to mean they come along, tell us what the decision is and expect us to fall into line. But I feel like we're very separated already. We've sort of probably taken it for granted for a bit over generations that the union is there and nothing will ever really disturb it. Brexit is a major challenge for the union, both Scotland and Northern Ireland. We vehemently opposed the Brexit deal and what I have to do is make sure that I mitigate against the damage to the union. After everything that politics has thrown at us over the last five years, embarking on another row about identity and legitimacy and flags felt, well, unnecessary. But that was before coronavirus came along, which does not respect the status quo or political boundaries, meaning it's getting ever harder to ignore those voices asking whether or not the United Kingdom is fit for purpose. The claim to be tested over coming months and years is that coronavirus has bolstered the chances of Scotland breaking away from the rest of the United Kingdom. Through a crisis over the last six months, perhaps people have in Scotland have seen that no matter how difficult the challenges you face, you can do better and you can navigate your way through it better if you're in charge of your own decisions and your own fate rather than having that decided by people elsewhere. She's in a position where she is look, you know, talking to people about their safety and about de dealing with the virus. The difficulty for the UK government is we're in the position where we're talking also about funding the you know, 900,000 jobs in Scotland we're supporting, six and a half billion of financial support to the Scottish government. It's, it's more difficult for the people who are paying for it uh, to go through the pandemic than someone who is if you like, dealing with the health aspect of it, but not dealing with the financial aspect of it, not writing the cheques. Dealing with both aspects of this pandemic have been the businesses, particularly those on the borders, their lives complicated by the divisions and differences between the nations. I think it could have been a more joint up approach. I see the people that were pro-independence even more so now. I see people that were on the fence warm into Nicola Sturgeon and what she could do for Scotland as an independent country. Scotland, like Wales and Northern Ireland, got through coronavirus with the help of the furlough scheme, funded by the United Kingdom collectively. But for some young independent supporters, they still want to break away, fully aware of the uncertainties this causes. It would be scary to say if we did vote voted for independence and we had the pandemic happened and I was on furlough and I would not have been paid for how many months. It would have been a, a massive struggle. So I can see the positives. And there is so many positives have been in the United Kingdom, but I also believe that we could and we, we, don't, we don't know until we, if we, until we do it. The big question is how a referendum happens in the first place. There is no reason to doubt Boris Johnson when he says that one will not happen while he is Prime Minister. But that doesn't mean that one won't happen at all. So, no in all circumstances to independence is your view? Yes. And no in all circumstances to a referendum is your view? Well, there is no case uh, for a referendum when we are still in the midst of a pandemic. It's just the Tories use the language of never and you use the language of no plans, and people will hear the difference. So I, I'm saying that we will be going into the elections for the Scottish Parliament next year uh, on a manifesto platform saying uh, we do not support a second independence referendum, and so we will seek to get a mandate uh, from the people for that position.
Over the Irish Sea from Holyrood to Hollywood, a unionist heartland in Northern Ireland. And a mother and daughter here showing unions can go their different ways. A generational divide that rings alarm bells amongst those who oppose any talk of Northern Ireland reuniting with the Republic. What, what does the union mean to you? It means stability uh, for me, I think, and I think my generation would sort of feel the same. What does the union mean to you? Well, I've never had to ask myself that question before, um, so I don't, I don't really know. But at this moment in time, um, less and less. The public is often far less sentimental and much more practical about questions like what country they want to live in. I don't think as many people want a united Ireland, as uh, people say, because the um, level of living here is much higher. Do you see that creation of a new Ireland imminent? I think the conversation has very seriously begun. If you had to point to specifics that show, that demonstrate cooperation on a scale we haven't seen recently or before, what would they be? We have two world-leading contract tracing apps that have allowed us to combat the virus as best as possible on a north-south basis. We have had cooperation around keeping uh, vital trade links and, and transport links open through our two transport ministers. Uh, there has been cooperation around the hospitality sector and how that is opened in a staged and managed way. Don't read too much into these moves, insists Northern Ireland's First Minister. Recently, there have been quite a lot of issues where Northern Ireland and the Republic have cooperated. Is there a pattern of moving a bit more to an all Ireland approach? We will cooperate, of course, and share information uh, with our neighbours in the Republic of Ireland because it's the right thing to do um, for our own citizens here in Northern Ireland. If you take the app, for instance, we decided to develop our app in a similar way so that it is interoperable with the app that's coming on the mainland and also with the app in the Republic of Ireland. That's sensible. I don't apologise for that. Also not apologising for Brexit, but having to implement a deal that she doesn't like done by a Prime Minister she helped put in number 10. We vehemently opposed the Brexit deal. I think it did damage the relationship uh, between the two of us. I have to recognise that that is the reality now. And what I have to do um, as the leader of unionism in Northern Ireland is to make sure that I mitigate against the damage to the union. The future of the union has too often been boiled down into a pantomime. Boris versus Nicola. Hero and villain. And which side is which depends on your point of view. But, as one of the most senior unionists in the country told me, it's not Scotland whose place is most at risk. It's Northern Ireland. Only they have a constitutional right to a vote on their status in the UK, not the Scots. When the will to continue started to dissipate and new strategies emerged, we started to move towards the IRA ceasefire of August 94 and the Loyalist ceasefire of October 94. Tour guide Paul Donnelly explains to outsiders how today's Northern Ireland is the product of bombs and ballots, but political uncertainty is the most destabilising thing at the moment. The uncertainty about the union, whatever direction it's going to go in, sort of feeds into my everyday work. And, you know, it's, it's the economy, stupid, for many people is the bottom line of anything. I find that my working life and my economic life just feels slightly fractious and uncertain at the minute. There are posts and flags here, 300 miles east on the Welsh-English border, but they mean different things. The consequences of devolution, limited self-government, here cause grumbling. And now we're walking through from England into Wales onto hall number seven. The Welsh Government was more restrictive in terms of uh, allowing people out to do things. It caused quite a bit of uncertainty and confusion in the members, as far as I could see, because uh, the, you had this difference in standard that was being applied. You, you've got ministers going up and saying different things about what should be quite common guidelines. The idea that Wales or Scotland or England, or Northern Ireland, may just do things differently because they can. I think that is quite frustrating if you happen to be a business or a family or a charity or an individual which may, particularly in Wales's case, have significant cross-border 
uh, interests and give rise to people thinking, well, actually, this is about politics. It's not about the economy or it's not about COVID. What's happening here in Wales matters because, unlike Scotland and Northern Ireland, there aren't nationalists in the administration trying to redraw the map of the United Kingdom as we know it. Now, the Labour Welsh First Minister is no friend of Boris Johnson, but he admits he couldn't have got an independent Wales through the pandemic without the help of the Westminster Treasury, which means English taxpayers paying for that furlough scheme. He preaches unionism without as many union jacks. Could he be a poster boy for keeping the four nations of the United Kingdom together? Right across the United Kingdom, we've done broadly similar things, but our messaging has been different. It has brought home to people the nature of devolution and the fact that we have a Welsh government here in a way that nothing else has done in 20 years. Could you ever see the day that Wales separated off from England? If the United Kingdom were to fracture, then everybody will have to think about the way in what remains can go on working for everybody. I am very clear that if a population in Scotland or indeed in Wales wanted to hold a referendum, it is for the people of Wales and the people of Scotland to make that decision. And then that decision must be respected. A sovereign nation choosing to alter its borders is the most momentous decision it can take. But in this era of continually accelerating political turmoil, perspective alters. Coronavirus has revised some people's priorities. If change is going to happen to the union, it may already be too late to stop it. Sam Coates, Sky News.